one of the unique things about Keys Valley is what you do with the dog as far as their biddability, their biddable dogs, their dogs that work, and your passion has expanded itself into this area of service dogs. Can you give us some information about that, and how did that become a reality for you? How did you get involved in that? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think it sort of started with the passion when I saw the guide dogs changing people's lives. And I've always loved dogs. I always knew since I was a little kid that I wanted to do something with dogs all my life. And um, I started to think about what that could be. Um, and I was looking for a, a need. I felt that I could teach the dogs anything. It was just a question of finding the right, what best way to go. <clears throat> so I started to explore that and just being open to it, seeing, asking people questions, seeing where the need was, where they weren't getting help. You know? So guide dogs were real experts for that. So training guide dogs didn't really interest me, but I loved that they went everywhere with their people, they changed their people's lives, they were partners for their lifetime, and I saw how happy the dogs were. It's a great lifestyle for the dogs. So all of that interested me, and I was busy training dogs in every way I could, and just learning to become a trainer. But I didn't really have a direction for the service work yet. Um, but my mom started to have difficulties walking. Um, she had peripheral vascular disease that came from smoking more like two or three packs of cigarettes a day from the time she was 16 um, to age 70, at which point um, it started to affect her body in other ways. So I, I saw that, oh, maybe this is the need, maybe, maybe mobility. And um, so I started to explore mobility dogs and research what are other people doing, what are other trainers doing. And um, I couldn't find anything on it. Everybody that talked about mobility dogs were talking about dogs around wheelchairs. And I only ever wanted to work with colleagues. And I knew that Good they're, they're not, they're not, retrieving is not what they live for, they live for their people, right? whatever they can do to help their people. And um, so this idea started to take shape, that how could the colleagues help, and what is their forte? And I am a very tactile person, because since I was a child, my vision has been bad. And my eyes don't work together. So it's always been challenging to, to read. I think I learned to read when I was nine. So I found other ways to, you know, relate to the world, and a lot of it was tap. And I found that the colleagues themselves, too, they love to be touched. And I discovered a sort of brought what I knew about the colleagues yeah, to training. I started to explore with them what made them happy, what interested them, and how best to motivate them. And I learned from my beloved friend's grandmother, Sydney, first. Um, but then again with Flynn, who repeatedly with many of the colleagues that I've known, that if I treat them and, and teach them with patience, treat them very gently, and let them come to me through the training, that they were happy. And there was nothing they would not do. Everything was open. They would just excel in so many ways, solve so many problems, all those generations of breathing for hurting that the shepherds did, the 
independent problem solving ability that Collins had. I, I saw that. And when I combined that with tactile connecting with them, uh, and then I started to tap into their first language, which is body language. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. And I realized from them showing me this is the way to communicate. And um, and I so I re- I developed a training plan that provides the dogs an opportunity to help people in the way that they excel in body language and through tactile connection connection. And um, I saw how happy it makes the dogs. And then when I connected them with people that needed that kind of help, oh, it was just so beautiful. It's so wonderful. It's everybody is happy. The, the relief that my clients feel when they're connecting with a colleague this way is so profound. And if they're praising the dog comes from you know really deep in their heart. And the colleagues being colleagues, of course, know this is so genuine mm-hmm. that they are totally happy about it and fulfilled by it. And it's so different from praising a dog, the dog, you know. Right. No, it's like thank you and a hug. And so, you know, I developed this training plan that could help people stay on their feet. And it seemed to be something that wasn't, I wasn't seeing it in other dogs, in other training plans. And so I got more and more excited about it. And then, sadly, the end of my mom's life, the last six years of her life, she had had, because of her peripheral vascular mm-hmm. disease, she had surgery, bypass surgery, which was not completely successful. And there was a wound on her leg that was chronic until the time came when she was uh, in the hospital and got a MRSA infection. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor said to her, even though she was, you know, heavily um, drugged up for pain, yeah, do you want your life or do you want your leg? That's what he said to her. That's what the surgeon said to her. I was, I'm glad. Yeah, she said, I want to live. And um, so he amputated her leg above the knee, one leg. And um, so the last six years of her life, she was in a motorized wheelchair, um, which gave her mobility and gave me anxiety because she turned it up on full speed and right. zoomed around the place. And I was like, I was always worried, you know. <laughs> she had a like, horse car then. <laughs> yeah, and she had an amazing attitude right. around it. You know, she said, I'm ridiculous. I'm a ridiculous person. I have one of everything else everybody has two of. I have mm-hmm. one breast, one leg, you know. So, and that, her spirit was just amazing. Her attitude. Yeah, great attitude. And, you know, she'd, you know, talk politics with her driver that was taking her for errands to the doctor and stuff. Which is, it was just an amazing thing to see. But I wanted to help people that couldn't walk. We're having difficulty walking. And so that really fixed my determination. So, every, you know, as I work in this field, I continue to develop the training plan and refine it. And I have a client that has been walking now 24 years, in spite of her most, uh, um, multiple sclerosis, that she was diagnosed with at 37. And I'm just doing team training now with her, with her fifth mobility problem. Wow. So, yeah, and each dog has had, over their span of time, years of work with her, and she's traveled around the world with them. She's gone up the Mississippi in a riverboat, paddleboat, you know. Um, She's gone to the Mardi Gras and ridden in the carriage and been given the honorary coconut and beads for being in my oh, wow. And uh, just had adventures that she otherwise wouldn't have had. 
Right. So those doors will open to her.